I wanted to talk about some self-care habits and this is because I've been through some rough things this year. 2020 is not what I expected at all. I thought this was going to be the most fantastic decade where the start of something new, where I get everything together and I begin my legacy and my empire, all those girl boss things, but none of it happened because January and February were some of the toughest months I've experienced thus far. It was just emotionally and physically draining. So suffice to say, January and February 2020 was not going that well and I was just looking forward to March and saying that March is the beginning of our year and I was just, I was just calculating the Asian New Year and saying, well, I gotta make most of it. So I was saying, you know, my New Year will begin when the rest of Asia does. And then this coronavirus thing happened. My sister is still in denial and is saying that her new year hasn't started yet, but at this point I've accepted it and this is the new norm. On a more serious note, I trust that everything is going to be fine soon and there are very smart, intelligent and hardworking people that are working on the solution right now. The thing I can do is just stay at home and try to do my part in this society. Smelling like bologna. <laughs> like, I was so fixated on my body and on more, I guess, the physical. I found myself going in front of the mirror like several times a day, just lifting my shirt and like poking at my fat, um, just stretching it and just wishing that it wasn't there. Just like pull at my neck area here like really viciously just be like doing this like I was trying to cut away parts of my face and I just noticed how as my stress grew my fixation on my body also grew alongside it when you feel like you've lost control over your life it's so easy to target yourself because that's the one thing you can really bully looking at myself with disgust and just constantly picking at the flaws that I could see and now looking back now I see that these are parts of me that I've never really been that unhappy with but it, during that time it just became something that I became obsessed with once I started noticing this I decided to go to the gym and let me tell you gym transformed my life because I never really categorize myself as a gym person especially the per especially the kind that will go to the gym and like make a big show of it but honestly gym really 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 helped me so much in everything i'll be in the parking lot of the gym just bawling my eyes out for 30 minutes but like almost 20 minutes later i'll be smiling with the endorphins rushing through me just because i did some cardio and in january i just felt like my life was in i was like on a big hamster wheel and my life was just turning and turning and turning and i was just stuck there in the middle without having enough courage or clarity to make a decision so i was just being turned round and round and that's when I decided that I was gonna go work out because initially I felt really awkward and I like felt like I stood out a lot especially because I'm working in a more industrial area so there's a lot of like old hockey big men that are really like just kind of like gym bros I don't know um, but after going getting to know them they're some of the friendliest, sweetest people I've known and just having a community that knows nothing about you except you like your exercise ethic just really helps you realize that you live multiple lives and even though one, ar one area or many areas of your life feels like it's crumbling you're not failing in all of them and there are groups of people that are your community around you and all the places that still accept you and are and that you're still um, you're still thriving in. And the most powerful thing for me in working out was that I was of course sweating it out and really getting that kick. But most importantly, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, 
once even if I felt like the whole week had passed by without really me really moving forward or finding clarity I found that just knowing that I worked out it felt like a like a wholly selfish thing to do but a thing that I chose to do for myself and that really helped boost my confidence because I realized that I was doing something for me even though I felt like there was nothing that I could do to better my situation days, weeks, and months will pass with you being unable to, to fix your situation and even if I felt like my life was in someone else's hands just knowing that in a few months my body would be healthier and closer to my fitness goals was just everything and it made me feel so much better it made me feel like I had some kind of control over my life when you, especially when you're working in fight or flight mode it really helps you because just knowing that you are fit, physically fit, and which is directly linked to your mental capacity, can really help you gain the confidence into making your decisions and moving forward. So, if I, for example, felt really sick and tired, then I might not have the kind of same kind of confidence to really take more control and initiative over the course of my life. This teaches you to do the best you can afford to do in that moment and you don't have to be like your perfect self you can't be your whole self in the situation especially when you're going through a really rough time you can't be expected to perform the same way that you did that's why i also believe it's so important to continue projects side hustles uh, hobbies that are important to you it's so important to maintain those aspects of your life because those are the things that really helped me during the time because it just reminded me that I have multiple options and other skills and other goals and I will always be able to make it out alive. I'm just really glad that I was able to identify these negative patterns. I don't want to ever look at myself as a target. It just reminded me that it's so, so crucial that you identify your coping mechanisms and and be able to decide whether they're beneficial or not and if they're harmful to you it you can get so caught, caught in a rut by going to the gym by focusing on my fitness by focusing on my health it really helped me step up my game and also to keep, keep pushing forward because it showed me that i have other things other aspects of my life that i must continue improving if you find yourself in a difficult situation, really be honest with yourself. You don't want to be caught in a loop where you're just constantly badgering yourself for no reason, especially when the world is. Like, I always joke that you enter this world alone and you leave alone, and it's rough, but it's true. After, I think, watching Parks and Recreation in university, I always like, joke like, treat yourself, meant like blowing so much cash and just eating all the finest foods and all the things I wanted. and. And now I don't think that's self-love at all. Like obviously, it's good to treasure yourself enough to give yourself um, fine things or things that you might desire. But self-care is just about for now. For me now, it's more about your five senses: seeing beautiful things, like reading beautiful literature, or seeing beautiful destinations on social media. That can really help you kind of realize that there's more beauty and expansiveness in this world. Um, I like spritzing my room with scents or putting just putting on perfume even if I'm not going anywhere. Music of course um, or just silence. Silence is great too when you're just trying to drown out everything else and just really f find peace. Silence can do a great job. Um, touch. I love petting my dog. <laughs> I love surrounding myself with fuzzy blankets and of course taste. I love a warm tea. I find that hot beverages always helps with any mood, um, good mood, bad mood, any mood. Um, if you're just focusing on those five senses, it can really just help you calm down and realize that you, and I think ground you, I think that's what it really does. That's one of the practices for calming down anxiety or dissociation and it just reminds you and just pulls you back from whatever thought patterns you might be stuck in to acknowledge the moment you're in now and to realize that you're safe and you're sound. Once you feel stuck in the situation, it just feels like it's the end of the world. 
it's not the end until you are dead. And there's any number of ways that the situation can pan out, and it really, really depends on the, your first of all your perspective, whether you believe that you are stuck and nothing's gonna happen and it's the end, or two, you can just say that you know what, I'm you know, I'm sick and tired of just being pushed around. I'm gonna take life by my own hands. Reminding yourself, it's so hard, it's so difficult, but reminding yourself that the situation you're in right now, will it matter? It might matter actually in five years, but the pain, the fear, the anger, the anxiety, those things will disappear because you'll find yourself in a completely different situation. I hope everyone is safe and well, and Remember, your homework is to evaluate your thoughts, your thought patterns, and your coping mechanisms and making sure that you're your biggest fan. Adios.